Why are people so afraid of God's righteousness, mm. of His holiness? Mm. Why is God afraid of that? We don't, we, in the Lord's Prayer, we don't say, Oh, loving Father, you who are in heaven, we say, Holy, our Father, you have holy be your name. Yeah. The, the Bible actually talks more about the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, mm. than it do the love of God. And we actually yeah. have something here. We can try and see if it's possible to see it. Yeah, you see it. You, you can say it and I can put it on, you can see it. Try to read. Yeah. What, yeah. what is that saying? This, yeah. this is, try to explain what yeah. you have there. What I actually did is because I saw, I saw some people were mentioning David Pawson uh, on the comments. And yes, that's true. He has a very excellent teaching on this. But I remember I was listening to David Pawson and I really started to think, is this really true? I mean, it was so radical, so so new even for me. So I actually took my Bible dictionary and I found all the verses where it talks about God loving someone, loving Israel, loving uh, people, some person that God was loving. So I took all of those scriptures and I took all the scriptures that talked about uh, God as holy, God as righteous, uh, God as uh, almighty, all of these, and, and I tried to combine them together to see what is actually the emphasis that the Bible puts when it comes to the nature of God. Mm. And now, yeah, yeah. And before he, he read that, I think most people, if, if I ask you how many percent of the Bible is talking about the love of God, how many percent are talking about that? If Mo people who don't read the whole Bible but just read post post postcards and uh, billboards and uh, posters that has been put up, you almost have that idea that 50-50, 50% of the Bible is about the love of God, love of God, love of God, or maybe 90% even of the Bible is the love of God. But this is actually not what you see. No. This is what you see. Actually what I saw, well, I'm going to show it, and the red part here. I don't think they can see it because I think it's the opposite because it's this telephone. But oh, yeah, okay, eight, you can see the red part is eight yeah. percent, eight percent, and that is actually how many scriptures that was talking about the love of God. And yesterday, people were talking about it's important to have a balance. Balance. We need and, balance. And that's true. Balance is very important. But mm. ba balance is the truth. Mm. The truth is the balance. The balance is not how I feel it should be. The balance that the Bible presents is should be our our balance. Mm. So if we take here, like God is holy, fifty percent faithful, eleven judge, the, God as a judge, seventeen powerful, eighteen righteous, sixteen just, fourteen love, eight yeah eight percent. And it's so interesting because as somebody said, but it, it, but but we are so used to yeah the only way we can preach the gospel to people is to preach the love, love God, love you, God, have an amazing plan, He love you. You don't find the love of God mentioned one place in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the only book where we actually see how the early church was yeah. preaching the mm. gospel after the cross. The only book in the whole entire Bible where we see how they went out and how they were preaching. Yeah. And you don't find the love of God preached any places there. You find the righteousness of God. You find the holiness of God. Mm. And what is and the judge and God as a judge. Mm. And what is interesting <clears throat> is that if you preach, oh God love you, have a wonderful plan for your life and you are amazing as you are and God have something good and it often become a feeling thing or oh God love me, I also love me, yes I give my life to Jesus and they receive the word with gladness without even seeing their sin and mm. fleeing from the wrath of God. So they receive it with gladness and a few weeks later when persecution set in because of the word, they fall away. Yeah. But if you come to God because you have seen your sins, because you have seen that you are under the wrath of God and you saw the love of God in sending the Son of God, so you through the repentance and being born again can experience salvation from the wrath of God because you are saved from your sins, so you are now in Christ and you have received the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit the love of God is poured out in your heart because God is now our Father in heaven. Yeah. 
when you experience that everything makes sense because you are so thankful mm. because you know what you are safe from mm. you know what you are safe to and you know who you are in Christ basically you can say that grace doesn't make sense unless you present the wrath of God because it's when I see I need grace Mm. That's when I'm thankful for grace. If I think that I don't really need grace, if I think that I am wonderful, I have God just sees wonderful things in me, if that's everything I understand, I will not really be thankful mm. for grace. But it's when I really understand I have screwed up, I, I need help, and God presents grace. Then I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I need that. And I think that's the danger when we preach the gospel. Paul says in Romans uh, 1.16 that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Well, if we change that message, how can we expect our message to have the same power? If the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, and what we do is we preach a message that is totally different to what they preached in the Bible, how can we expect the same results? Because the power is in the message, the but it's the, in the message that is presented in the Bible and not the message presented by modern preachers. And we, I can just end up also and we say we need balance, yes, but the truth is we don't have balance. And, and I saw that with some of the comments on our video, if people can comment what they did on the video we did before, that is showing a lack of balance, to be honest, sorry to say it. Mm. For me, I grew up in a church. I have, was Christian six years before I heard the first sermon ever of the fear of God. Mm. I haven't heard any sermon, sermon of the fear of God. And it was because I left that church and found some teaching on YouTube. And, and it was so shocking for me because there is so much about the fear of God. In the Bible. In yeah. the Bible. <laughs> and, and, and so little in the church. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say, when we talk about balance, we are far from balance. We are so far from balance because if you go to churches today, you almost hear nothing of the fear of God, nothing of the righteousness of God, nothing of the holiness of God, but you hear about the love of God in a way where it actually is taken out of balance because it becomes an emotion, it becomes a, a, a sexual a misunderstanding love instead of the holy love of God. Yeah. So do we love people? Of course we love people. Mm. God has commanded us to love people and because we love people we are preaching the righteousness of God mm. and the cross and what Jesus did for them. Yeah, do God love people? Of course, where God loves people, we love people. But you have to understand what love is hmm. before you can go deep on that. So I encourage you to take your Bible, read it, read what they preach in the book of Acts.